and thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, different things that, uh, with my students, we have done over the years. Uh, we are not married with any specific theory of gravity at all. So we search, uh, we have searched for different proposals of MOM to see how they work, and uh, from a theoretical perspective, sometimes. Uh, even uh, coming closer to the uh, observational aspects in order to see how, how well things actually uh, can fit. Uh, just to give you an idea, and I've never been scared about it, uh, there, there have been over the years, uh, there have been many theories of gravity uh, constructed. Uh, this is just a classification of them. Mariana Espinosa in Mexico did this. Uh, it's essentially a classification of theories of gravity uh, based on observational ideas, theoretical uh, motivations, and so on. On the basis you have Newtonian gravity, the, 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 the tree itself, yeah, sorry, it's, it's, not, it's, not, uh, well, it's not very clear, but just go to the, to the website, the pressing presentation, you, you may zoom in, zoom in sorry, and, uh, and see the different uh, aspects uh, of it. Uh, anyway, it's just to give you an idea how complicated things are, even without putting a uh, moon on things. Uh, well, yesterday, I, I was not going to be talking about this, but yesterday I, I heard someone uh, saying that it's very complicated to publish sometimes uh, uh, articles and to, be, uh, uh, and to be accepted by the community uh, uh, by, by, by publishing new things and new ideas. Well, I'll tell you just a very quick story. In Mexico in the uh, 18th century, uh, Guevara was a Jesuit uh, uh, priest, uh, he was a physicist, and uh, as, uh, as all the Jesuits uh, uh, in, the, in the Spanish uh, colonies, he was uh, expelled uh, from, from Mexico, and he ended up in Italy. He wrote two books, one about philosophy, and the other one called uh, Cosmological Pastime or Family Entertainment about the disposition of the universe. This book about cosmology was the first one in the continent. Uh, but anyway, he, he, he was uh, accepting Newton's idea of, uh, about the disposition of the universe uh, uh, as opposed to the uh, standard teachings of uh, occult fluids by Descartes. Of course, at the time it was uh, uh, very difficult to publish something like that. He decided to send the book to the librarian in Guanajuato, in Mexico, the book was hidden in the library 200 years after that the book appeared when they were cleaning and organizing things and now we have the book. Otherwise perhaps we would not have Guevara and perhaps also the book. But anyway, this is how difficult things can be whenever you are proposing things, okay? It's not that bad anymore, but just, uh, yeah, just, just, just get, get there. Okay, I'm, I'm just there with the original manuscript in the library of, uh, of one of them. Anyway, just to give you roughly an idea of dimensionality and things that I'm going to be talking about, uh, just remember that uh, rotation curves can be obtained by Kepler's third law. Essentially, the velocity is proportional to the square root of the mass uh, divided by uh, the square root of uh, the distance. Uh, if you ask for centrifugal balance, the acceleration is squared over r, so the acceleration force is then proportional to the mass over r squared with a negative sign to uh, account for the attractive, attractiveness of, uh, uh, of gravity times uh, a constant, which is a Newtonian constant. You can calibrate it, for example, with the motion of planets, and you get that exactly the same. Uh, can be done with two efficient scalings. If the velocity is proportional to the uh, fourth power uh, to the one over fourth power of the uh, mass, then the centrifugal balance, which is exactly the same uh, as before, you can then build the acceleration, which is just the square root of the mass divided by r with a new uh, calibrating constant. Okay, you can you can calibrate that constant. It has that number, and it can be related to a naught through that uh, that relation. So essentially, it's another way just to get the, the, the same idea. But these two feature uh, scalings of flat rotation curves uh, eventually uh, 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 can be obtained in this way. Well, okay, just to give, just to give you a, a, an idea of how relativistic 
things can work. We can do pretty much the same, but now let's work with the relativistic tempest uh, third law, for example. By the principle, uh, by the uh, uh, principle, we know that the G0 0 at order, at second order perturbation, has to be just 2 phi over C squared. So the correction is, is, is it appears there. In isotropic coordinates, which is the PPM uh, framework to work, okay, then uh, the, uh, the, 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 time, the, the time component would be just the G0 0, zero that, that it's there, and the correction will be just proportional to the potential, which is the only uh, uh, quantity that uh, we have essentially dimensionally speaking for the problem. So in this isotropic coordinates that appear here, that's what one gets. One, uh, one transforms uh, this uh, metric at second order perturbation uh, two spherical coordinates, then the G00 component is exactly the same, but the GRR component is this one, with this gamma parameter, which is uh, the first PPM parameter. Notice that uh, this, when, when gamma is equal to one, one gets a short side solution of uh, uh, any order, but anyway, we're talking about second order perturbation, and uh, if you look at Einstein's field equations, also where gamma equals one. Let's do the same with two diffusion scalings. Uh, the G naught naught would be then proportional, uh, well, the, the, the potential is proportional to a logarithm. That's how it appears, okay? Uh, we can put the A0, but I decided in this slide just to leave the GM, the, the, this, uh, this new uh, modified uh, Newton's constant, if you want, or just extended uh, gravitational constant. Uh, let's use isotropic coordinates as well. Go back to spherical coordinates, and one gets the value for the GRR to be given by that. Notice that uh, it doesn't depend on the radius. So that's a very important thing uh, just to observe there. It's possible to just, uh, well, just to calibrate it. In the next slide, I will tell you very briefly how to do it. But the lensing observations, uh, that's what I will tell you in the next slide, uh, imply gamma equals 1 or close to 1. And theoretically speaking, one can get uh, this, uh, these ideas. Anyway, uh, just to uh, calibrate that uh, gamma parameter to, to obtain it from, from Lensing in this, in this new regime, uh, just uh, very quickly, the Lensing of elliptical spiral uh, and galaxy groups can be modeled using total matter distribution with isothermal profiles, okay? So the, uh, the, the total mass would be given by that relation, V squared R of the G. And the dark matter profiles, let's, st let's start with the, with the standard uh, 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 scenario, the dark matter profiles provide the same two official relation of baryonic matter of spiral. So the velocity is proportional to the uh, uh, one over four power of the baryonic mass. If we take the Schwarz uh, metric plus the dark, uh, with, with the dark matter, then the D00 component in Schwarz will be equal to 1 over D11 of Schwarz which means well, that's the D00 component, 1 minus 2 times the gravitational radius over R. That's uh, essentially expanding this. And using that relation that the total mass is proportional to the V squared, one gets that relation. Now, the deflection angle in, uh, uh, in, in this theory, uh, which would be general relativity, is essentially a function of the components of the metric, E0 to the Schwarzschild, uh, Schwarzschild, G11, and the impact parameter, Ri. Can be, calcula can be calculated, but it, that deflection angle uh, is independent of the theory, should be independent of the theory. If your theory is going to predict correctly things, then uh, uh, the, the, the deflection angle beta in general relativity has to be the same in a new extended theory of gravity. So and that relation has to be valid for all impact parameters. So it's possible to find uh, using this uh, metric now, with the GRR here, it's possible to calibrate or to find the value of the gamma in this moment. And it turns out that whenever you do that, or uh, so the, 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 the equation that you have. Remember that this beta impact uh, deflection angle is an integral. One has to perturb it. And after the perturbation, one gets this relation, this relation for the, that, that, that was already there for the G00. But the important uh, thing is that one gets this, which corresponds to a value equal to one, coincident, uh, which is coincident with uh, the value that one gets from a relativistic Kepler's parallel. Okay, 
So what I'm going to be talking about, we have developed many theories of gravity, uh, sometimes with uh, the idea of the, with, 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 with the, with the idea of having one. I'm just going to be talking about pure metric theories with uh, extending with, uh, with, uh, with curvature matter codings. Okay, there are some others that, that we have done with you, but anyway. So the action will be given like this in general terms. It's a function of the Ricci scalar and the matter Lagrangian, and the standard definition of the uh, energy momentum, the energy momentum tensor through the matter Lagrangian. The null variations of the action yield uh, these uh, field equations, which are of the fourth order, and the trace is given like that. The general idea or the, the general result of this uh, theories of gravity is that there is a non-geodesic motion of particles. So uh, that follows because the divergence of the energy momentum tensor is in general terms different from zero. Uh, the results uh, of, of, of all this, uh, it's quite complicated to just make the calculations, but I'm just giving you the results. Is that you can define uh, in order to get a uh, month or the big month regime. Uh, there, are, there, there are two ways of doing it defining or having local Lagrangians, where the Lagrangian, for example, has the, the power law forms, uh, the Ricci scalar to the power of P, uh, the matter Lagrangian to the power of, of U, plus a matter Lagrangian to the power of B. The big month regime can be obtained uh, in many ways. Uh, when the value of p is equal to minus 3 and v equals to u minus 2. Uh, one of the very interesting thing which, uh, things we, which we calculated uh, before was uh, when uh, uh, r was uh, minus 3, l, uh, the u was uh, uh, 3, and the uh, v was equal to 0. We call that a strong curvature matter coupling because there is a coupling between the rich scalar and the matter Lagrangian in there. There are uh, some other ones that uh, are weaker uh, in, that, uh, uh, in, in that respect, uh, in which one has only a, 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 a term which is a low by itself, the bridge scalar to the power and the matter Lagrangian. Okay? There, were, there, there are no local uh, the proposals which are a bit more complicated to deal with, but they are important. Uh, the first work that we did uh, on that in 2011 use a non-local approach in that respect, in which one uh, uh, essentially by hand uh, imposes that uh, a mass function appears on the Lagrangian, and then in general terms, that's the constraint that needs to be satisfied by such a Lagrangian. Uh, I'm going to be talking now in a moment about this, because we use it as an example for cosmology. Anyway, so one of the first, uh, one of the first things that we're that, 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 that uh, these things are good for is, for example, if we take uh, this uh, theory, okay, and we apply it to clusters of galaxies, where to clusters of galaxies, well, clusters of galaxies are obviously not non-relativistic, but they, they might have corrections. For example, if you look at the orbital uh, motion of uh, Mercury about the Sun, the velocity is about 50 kilometers per second, uh, and, the, uh, and in units of the velocity, uh, measure the in units of the velocity of light, that's of the order of 10 to the minus 4. For a cluster of galaxies, the, 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 the typical velocities are of the order of 1,000 kilometers uh, per second. So the velocity in units of the velocity of light is 10 to the minus 3. So they are, in principle, more relativistic than Mercury. And if one wants to understand them, well, why not to put as a, basic, uh, as, as a base mod and you may add up uh, relativistic corrections. Uh, the first thing well, to, to notice is that the acceleration would be given at fourth order perturbation by that formula. And we took the theory that I just told you, that the last one on the list, uh, to, 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 make, uh, to, to make those calibrations uh, a few years ago, and that was the result. The, the, the calibrations for these clusters, uh, well, the, the, the fits uh, look pretty, pretty good. There is uh, nothing but MOND as the non relativistic theory plus a small correction. But anyway, if one wants to uh, really extend this uh, further beyond, one needs to just make uh, a new uh, parameterized a uh, uh, new parameterized post Mondian uh, construction of things in the deep month regime. Uh, in order to get things, we have done that already. And uh, essentially, the acceleration to fourth order uh, uh, corrections is uh, it's given by that relation that it's there. It's a pure dimensional uh, analysis 
uh, approach in order to get things and to deal with the potentials and the, the, the preliminary uh, uh, fits that we are observing. Uh, these are two of the galaxy clusters there, the mass profiles, uh, are looking like that. Well, anyway, in cosmology, we have, uh, we have also applied all this uh, to, cosmological, uh, to, to, to cosmology and the acceleration. Since the acceleration essentially uh, at the present epoch is given by uh, that result where uh, NH is the, the Hubble mass okay, and uh, uh, RH is the Hubble radius, then uh, the acceleration today is of the order of A0. Uh, the simplest application then of, of, of the previous series in the deep moon regime could be done in uh, late time cosmology. So, well, we, we use the, well, uh, I just wrote here the, cos the cosmographical parameters. A, H, Q, J, and S, the standard ones, and uh, we had to calibrate them. We used uh, the distance modulus relation, the, the, the normal one. We used the effect on the matter of Walker metric for dust of, of, of the previous models. In that case, uh, the, the matter of Lagrangian uh, is rho c squared, and curiously, uh, the mass conservation is valid when one uses that approach. Uh, the luminosity distance is given by that relation, so we can calibrate the cosmographic parameters uh, H0, Q0, J0 of the present epoch using, for example, the Union Supernova 1A uh, data. And that's what we got uh, for that, that's for one of the models, the weak, uh, the weak uh, Copeland model that I described before, and the strong Copeland model there. You see that the, 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 the results are quite, quite, quite nice. There is no dark matter, no dark energy in those uh, in, in these fittings. The, the value of the H0 is about 17 in both, uh, in both kids. Uh, in order to see things, because sometimes uh, this uh, non-locality is interesting, and non-locality is usually accounted by uh, inserting fractional calculus on your theories, uh, well, we have also done that. Uh, we have uh, inserted, dimensionally speaking, a knot into cosmology, into a fractional calculus cosmology. And uh, what we got after uh, fitting the parameters and uh, thinking about what would be the fractional uh, parameter, the, the, the fractional derivative uh, the parameter important uh, in the uh, in, in the, in the order of derivation, it turns out that the uh, fractional parameter has to be of the order of three house, which was already uh, uh, accounted for theoretically by UC, uh, and that's the fit also to the same data using fractional calculus. Finally, I will just mention something, uh, uh, just, just something we have been trying to just work out different uh, different regimes, the determined regimes, the non relativistic extended regime, where a uh, month is uh, it, it's, it's just important. We have gone into the, relative, the extended relativistic regime, and that's general relativity. But that's essentially what we have been trying to, to just work out. And just to just to give you a, a, a quick idea of, of the things, uh, Quite recently, well, uh, we have uh, started to think about a different, uh, different approach of things, Thank you. Uh, because uh, we, as I showed you, there are many proposals where to arrive to. But uh, one of the things that appear quite interesting is the following: If you, for example, take the deep mode routine, okay, it should be uh, the, the field, the field equations should be uh, such that a squared over r. Uh, have to be of the order of G A naught rho, which is essentially G A naught N over R cube. And so the simplest field equation that you can actually think by just looking at that relation is that the divergence of phi rad phi should be proportional to rho. That corresponds to a known P Poisson equation with a factor of P equals 3. The P Poisson equation essentially comes from this Lagrangian. It's a well-known equation that people have been wondering with for about 100 years or so. Uh, uh, and for, for example, for the, for the value P equals 2, one gets uh, the standard Poisson equation. Uh, a qual is essentially a generalization of the P uh, Poisson equation, essentially uh, the, 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 the Lagrangian of a qual is a function of the gradient of the potential, and the field equations, which can be uh, obtained uh, immediately from, from the earlier Lagrange equations, are given by that. 
Okay, one can define a complementary P-Poisson equation. If you look at this equation and the dimensions that are required for your uh, field equation, essentially, the, the number of listed ones, well, what about if, for example, I change, I swap terms, because they would be of the order of, I swap terms of phi uh, and graph phi in the, uh, uh, in the, in the, der in the derivation. Uh, sorry, there's, there should be a graph phi here. It's not phi, it's graph phi. Uh, it, it's easy to see here. The graph phi to the p to the minus 2 can be uh, swapped by the phi, okay? So you get uh, a, a more complicated equation. And uh, what uh, it's obtained essentially is uh, that, uh, uh, that equation there. And one can find the Lagrangian that comes from that equation. It's that complete. Uh, uh, the complementary Lagrangian. If you adopt the complementary P Lagrangian and the uh, P, uh, the complementary P uh, Lagrangian or the P uh, uh, Laplace, Laplacian, one gets this equation, which is a complete, say, P Laplacian equation. It has solution. It has solutions. One can, for example, put a source by a point by source and uh, see that the solution is essentially a logarithmic solution. Uh, the, uh, for spherical symmetry, one can, see, one can check, this is my last slide, the whole for spherical symmetry, uh, one can see that there is an external field effect, one can divide the integral by the internal, uh, by the internal mass to the radius r, and the external, uh, the external to the radius r, and uh, for the case of, for example, uh, the binary system in the frame of reference of the center of mass, the right hand side of the general solution uh, of the, this complete P uh, Poisson equation that comes from the Green's function, okay, the, 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 this right hand side is essentially well, it's, it's, it's just uh, the reduced mass uh, uh, divided by R, and so one can say that the acceleration observed in, 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 in binaries should uh, essentially, or the, 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 the velocities, the velocity profiles should actually flatten. The complete T Laplace equation can be generalized to a complete equal one in that respect. So, in the future, uh, we will be looking at uh, relativistic extensions of uh, this complete uh, equal or complete P Poisson, the P Poisson equations and see whether they can fit different observations. Thank you very much. So is this a bit like um, like Mond or like a qual, but with without the need to I mean this complete uh, complete a qual, but without the need to ignore the uh, uh, the the, the curl term? Yes, there's no curl term since uh, the solution went very quick. You no longer but have to uh, yeah, so you have, have to a, assume the curl term. here, then you get uh, the solution, the general solution is this Green's function. And then there's no curl term, there's, things get uh, conserved completely, so energy, momentum, etc. Get, get, get conserved. So, yeah, there's no rotation in terms of it. It's excellent. Uh, I have a question. Um, you are able to describe the Hubble diagram for supernova. Type 1A. Yeah. I'm wondering if you can also explain the angular size distance, which means can you explain the size of galaxies or yeah, the size yeah. of distant objects or only the luminosity? Well, no, it, it's possible to do it. So, yeah, but yeah, because, because the behavior is, is pretty weird. Yeah, but uh, my, my, I mean, I think I'm saying, yeah, it, it's possible to do it. I have a question about the fractional derivatives. Yeah. So I never understood how you can get one from that. Maybe you can explain that a bit. Because well, the reason I'm asking is that if I understand correctly, fractional derivatives can change something like one of our r potential to a log potential, but they're still linear, so you don't get the square root of the mass, which you also need to represent. Well, moving that, fractional derivatives, uh, take into account, I just want to quickly slide as well. 
but uh, just go back. So, for example, look at this one, okay? The, the standard derivative of a function f with respect to x, okay, would be given by that if f, if f is a power law, okay? And that's the result you get. You can write it in terms of the Gantt function there. So you generalize it saying that uh, the fractional derivative of a function f would be equal to 1 over gamma times that integral. So the derivative is already an integral. That sounds strange in principle, but the equations are include the integral differential. So non-locality, and that's the point uh, to, to acknowledge in this, they, they, they take into account non-locality because integrals appear there. So if you, for example, define uh, a Lagrangian, uh, a fractional uh, Lagrangian, okay, you will get integral differential equations, and so non-locality is essentially added up into the problem naturally. But that's the linear equation. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, often more difficult to deal with. Even the standard that so. You can spend a lot of time, for example, deriving the exponential function, which would be really simple in the standard calculus when, 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 the, when, the, when the, 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 the factor or the, 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 the derivation factor alpha is an integer, but not anymore when it's uh, a function. It depends only the position dependence, but what is about is how, how it depends on the mass. Is it not linear in the mass? If you have two masses, don't they just give you the sum of the two potentials? No, not in this one. No, but then when it's when it's fractional, not necessarily. No, it gets much more complicated. Yeah. Sometimes it's in the inside there, and it's just messed up. Yeah. <coughs> so here we are. Break, but before the break, uh, I think uh, someone should come on stage to present uh, this poster. That means the person is going to go ahead and begin the second. Catch up yet.